it is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome you all once again to the second edition of uh, international lecture series on vastu vidya conducted by kandalu shala an institute totally dedicated for higher learning and research in ancient indian wisdom the first lecture was held on last saturday of may and uh, a great scholar uh, brahmasri kanipai krishna nambudri part important universal knowledge with reference to the kandalu's temple which was a most fascinating one which is also uploaded in the youtube channel of uh, kandalu shala so far around 900 people have viewed that video today he will be presenting the second part of international lecture on vastu vidya with reference to the kandalu shala so let us start the session with a vedic invocation by adamana narayanan nambudri om munjamitva havisha jivanaya tamajnata yakshma dutaraje yakshma al ग्राह्य वै तदेन तंद्रमुन यदि यदि वे तो यदि मृत्योरिकमाहरापस्थारस्ताषमेन शत शारदा सहस्राक्षेण शत शारदे शतायुषा विषाहषमेन शतम शरदो नयातीन्द्रो विश्व दुरीत पारम शतंजीवशरदो वर्धमन शत हेमंतातमु वसंता शतमींद्री सविता बृहस्पति शतायुषा विषेम पुनर्दू today we have with us a legend in vastu vidya brahmasri kanipayu krishna nambudri part the vastu vidya kulapadi and also the dean of uh, sabatya vidya veda maharshi mahesh yogi vedic university in netherlands we are really honored with his gracious gracious presence once again with the great honor and respect we welcome you sir thank you santosham today's uh, section is also chaired by uh, mm-hmm. professor pc murli madhavan the director in chief of uh, kandalu shala a great scholar of international repute and a recipient of rashtrapati puraskar we mm-hmm. welcome you sir our beloved director and looking forward to hear your words of wisdom thank you i am delighted to welcome sri edamana narayanan putti an illustrious 
Vedic scholar and also the president of Kandalu Shala Sabha, who is concluding today's session with his remarks. With a great love and respect, let me welcome Sri Narayanan Puti. Let me also welcome our participants, scholars, professors, students, trustees, and members of the Kandalu Sabha and First Shala to a wonderful and fascinating evening. With a great uh, love and respect, now let me now invite uh, Dr. P. C. Mudli Madhavan, the Director in Chief of uh, Kandalus Shala, for the presidential address. Shruti Smriti Purana Anam Alayam Kadunalayam Namami Bhagavat Pada Sangaram Loka Sangaram Tarana Yagase Karaya Jagada Dharaya Dhara Dharachaya Dhara Gandharaya Girija Sangai Gasringarine Nadia Sekharine Drishati Lagine Narayane Nastrine Nagai Kanganine Nagai Nagrikine Nathaya Seyam Nadi most respected, the chief guest of the day, Brahmashri Kanipayur Krishan Nambudri Pat, as our Dr. Jodi told about him, Kulabati of Vasavidya, as far as Kerala is concerned, he is the last word of Vastu India. He is not only a scholar in Vastu Vidya or a Acharya in uh, Vastu Vidya, he is a master mind in several disciplines and uh, especially in Sanskrit Shastras. So the great tradition is highly imbibed by him from his ancestors. And uh, we are very proud and happy, the Kandaru Shala, to have our midst, Sri Kanipayur Krishnamburi Pad to talk on Vastu Vidya. I welcome personally as the director of the Kandaru Shala, Sri Kanipayur Krishnamburi Pad for this uh, intellectual exercise. Sri Ken Puti, Ken Aranan Puti, who is the chairman of Kandru Sabha and a Vedic scholar. He is uh, in our midst. Dr. Jodi, Dr. Pradeep Jodi, who is the trustee and our, uh, what we call, Financial, financial advisor. He is the man behind all these success of such programs. He is looking after all the technical aspects of the program. And uh, Sri Madhavan Nambudri, who is the vice president of Kandaru Shala, Kandaru Sabha. He is also involved in several programs of Kandaru Shala. I welcome all the trustees of Kandaru Sabha and my colleagues, in, beloved colleagues in Kandaru Shala, and also the learned scholars and uh, Sanskrit students and other students and uh, brothers and sisters who participate in this uh, uh, August platform online platform of Kandru Shala. Kandru Shala, the Institute for Higher Learning and Research in Ancient Indian Wisdom, is the outcome of the efforts of scholars to revive erstwhile Kandru Shala, the ancient university, in its pristine purity. Kandru Sabha, the managing trustee board of Shala, decided to establish the erstwhile university 
in three phases. The Institute for Higher Learning and Research is the first phase. That is what now going on. Developing to a deemed university is the second phase. And finally, establishing a PACA full-fledged university is the final or the third phase. The Shala purpose to impart all types of ancient knowledge systems, including Vedas, Vedangas, Upavedas, Darshanas, Puranas, Itihasas, ancient jurisprudence, physical and social sciences, archery, Indian arts, ship technology, etc., what were taught in their Stuyl University. We have, we are one by one, we are taking each discipline to our uh, activity and uh, slowly we are starting one after another the departments. See, it is without any uh, discrimination of caste, creed, or gender. We are, we are ready to impart, Kandarul Shala is ready to impart knowledge to anyone who seek the knowledge and uh, approach Kandarul Shala. This, this was the practice in S12 Kandarul Shala. Kandarul Shala in S12 University also, they never considered any type of differences, whether caste, creed, or whatever it may be. The first phase of revival of Shala in the form of institute was in inaugurated some one year back, one and a half year back, in the month of December 2020, uh, 2020. Within this small span of time, we could get unimaginable measure of help, guidance, and advice from scholars throughout the globe to fulfill our dream. We could conduct several significant academic events including international workshops, colloquiums, seminars, and lectures during these months. A galaxy of scholars visited Kandarul Shala and presented their invaluable, invaluable academic endeavors for the growth of this small infant institute. We are proud to say that we have conducted several international programs, seminars and workshops, even colloquiums at international level, and regular lecture series, and diploma course in uh, Kaushitaki Brahmana, and Aidareya Brahmana, we are, that is in pending, that is uh, uh, going to be launched next uh, uh, semester. And we have uh, slowly started our uh, opening some of the departments, very significant departments in the beginning. We have, uh, we are, uh, we, from the July onwards, we are planning to have some classes in Veda and Vedanga department. We have already uh, selected a professor, Professor R. Tyagarajan from Madras University, who retired from Presidency College of Madras, who is a well-known scholar in Sanskrit and Vedas and Vedangas. He will be the dean and head of the uh, department for the time being. And uh, that is Veda Vedanga department. And again, we have, uh, we have a plan to start the Sanskrit culture and art and culture, the department of art and culture. There's Sanskrit, art and culture. Three components are there. And we, uh, Professor C.S. Radhagishan, who is a leading international scholar and uh, retired from Pondicherry University. He has accepted, gladly accepted our, uh, uh, what we call, uh, our decision to select him as the D for that. And uh, two more study centers we are planning, that is one on Kandalore studies, the history of Kandalur, the social, social, social and cultural uh, and literal contributions of uh, uh, intellectual contributions of Kandalur Shala, uh, the, from the histor historical point of view, uh, that is the Kandalur studies, the department of Kandalur studies that we are planning to 
uh, we, uh, we have already informed the professor, professor, the noted historian, professor T.P. Shangarin Guti, and he accepted to give uh, uh, the, to accept the offer and also to uh, start a brief, small course on Kerala studies uh, from next July onwards. And uh, the fourth one is the uh, Department of Padmanabha Studies. So in, in Trivandrum, in the history, if you uh, turn back and just go through the, our past history of uh, Padmanabha Temple and Kandaru Shala, there was a naval relation between these two. So without the studies of Padmanabha, the history of the temple, the, the, the cultural and religious, the Vaishnava, um, the literature and so on and so forth, the studies of these areas, we cannot uh, uh, avoid as far as Kandarur uh, Shala is concerned. So we, have, we are planning to have the Padmanabha studies, the Department of Padmanabha studies, and a Vaishnava professor, Professor S. Padmanabhan, who retired from uh, um, Madras University, uh, we have uh, uh, um, requested him to take charge of the uh, Padmanabha studies. So these four departments will very, in a very humble way, we will start our work with, there, there should be four wheels to move the uh, vehicle like that the entire Kandru Shala should move on these four wheels, four departments. And uh, um, side by side, we will have our academic and other uh, programs uh, in, in a regular fashion. So everything will be planned accordingly. So now I want to uh, uh, inform you all that the, uh, the regular functioning of uh, Kandru Shala uh, should uh, happen uh, with uh, regular courses and other things by 2023. By 2022, now uh, in this year, present year, we have six months. Within six months, we will have our preparation and we will create an environment in, uh, in Kerala, not only in Trivandrum. Uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the seekers should have a, a, a pressing need should feel a pressing need to study Vedas, Vedangas, and other things and other subjects which were taught in our Kandru Shala earlier in the uh, uh, several centuries back. And uh, after creating an environment and, uh, and uh, creating a pressing need from the public, we have to uh, move further in designing new courses which will cater the needs of the present day society. With this, some humble observations on our Kandru Shala, because I have given an introduction on Vastu Vidya and, uh, uh, and uh, initial talk last meeting. So this is the second phase of the meeting. So we will, uh, we are eager to listen the scholarly uh, uh, presentation of Premashri uh, Kanipa Yur Krishnanaburi part. So we are anxiously waiting for that. And uh, I welcome one and all to this August uh, uh, assembly of scholars to listen the speech. With these observations, I beg to remain. Uh, I, I, we are happy that uh, good scholars like uh, Professor Srikala, uh, M. Nair, like that, several other scholars are also participating. And uh, regularly, we are getting very good scholars and uh, the uh, um, scholars of uh, high repute. Thank you, sir, for beautifully setting the platform for the guest speaker. Now, uh, without wasting any time, uh, let me with a great pleasure and uh, honor and with great pride and honor, let me invite our 
chief guest brahma sri kanipai u krishna nambudi part to deliver the second phase of second part of the international lecture on vastu vidya so oh, let me wait uh, our most beloved brahma sri kanipai u krishna nambudi part thank you abhivadeya krishna sarma nama namasmi ho om gunguru bhyo nama om gangana padaya nama om deve bhyo nama om rishi bhyo nama pitru bhyo nama namaskaram to all of you and uh, last uh, presentation i have gone some knowledge about the universe now i can continue with uh, this same knowledge not only that uh, a view to the temple complex how the temple complex is coming into the knowledge area and where the knowledge area must be executed or the provision for this knowledge for that here i am saying that the first sutta of atharvaveda states that the organism having 21 eternal energies circulating in the body of body or the body of human beings that of organisms must pray to saraswati as brahma vani for knowledge then they will attain intellect through the mind the second sutra indicates that this happened through interaction of the swarloga pidrubhavena with bhuloga madrubhavena and germination of bhuvarloga putrabhavena that is usual system and then here it says last presentation i said a is considered purva purva ghatakam or swarloga u is the madhya ghatakam bhuvarloga or the interconnecting one and ma is the uttara ghatakam bhuvarloga these three form the first three generations then the om word is the fourth generation as bringing forth or germinating process or we can say in malayalam genetical karma and the fifth generation of the praja all living bodies are brought for, from this brought forth by the chanting of om tantra samuchaya padalam 5 verse 3 expresses that if one chants the pranavam om 12 times we will become radiant and reach the brilliance of agni brilliance of agni that is bhuvanam universe bhumi will be creating the shabda brahma as the 51 alphabets so we have to stay with the 51 alphabets now this is the body of man and the all the alphabets creates from different parts of the body which shows in this diagram because this first kaka ganga etc in the and the chacha ganga is also in the hands and then continuously in the leg and the middle part and lastly they are a etc in the serous that is the usual usually that will be in the body this explains the importance of the alphabets which we will take up later only how these letters are coming in the universe now we can go to go to the second one the importance of the hands the fingers that is as far as the fingers are concerned or the hand is concerned the panchabhutas are represented by the five fingers the little finger is the earth the ring finger is the water middle finger is agni the index finger is the vayu thumb finger is akash and the alphabets for that la wa ra ya pa are also represented by these fingers 
And therefore, there's a principle that is, if you knowledge is in Vedas, and now if we fold the hands as two sets of Panchabudas will be there, one is in the universe and the other is in body. The palm Brahma denotes the Deva, Rishi, Pidru. So if we fold our hands, we are reaching the stage of Paramatma as the Panchabuddha and Deva, Rishi, Pidru in the universe body are joined together. Then what happens? The, each other transits the hearts and happiness by namaskaram, that is Torugaya, each other. This knowledge is also depicted in the Veda. Therefore, the Shala is to be formed to impart this knowledge. Then, then we have to come again to the temple complex where we have to arrange through the temple. That is here you can see there is one lotus flower. Usually that what totally you can see the temple complex. First lotus temple is the outer side. That is from the prasada to the compound wall. Then inside is the another lotus flower, which is the prasada. And again, Inside is the Bimba or Pratima is the third lotus. Or all inside and inside one by one. There were here three lotus flowers is considered for the temple complex. And the, here the first lotus temple or we can say these are these Tuvala Sarira, Sutrama Sarira and Karana Sarira continuously. Here, this Thuvala Sarira contains the outer side of the Prasada. That is, if you consider from the outside, first you will see the compound wall with Gobirams. Then you will see the Shivelipara. That is, you can see the Patmana Sami temple or something like that. Then you can see the Deepamala. Then you can see the Chittambalam and then the Belipiyadams. That is the five Pragaras. From Prasada, the Belipiyada is the first Pragara. Chittambalam is the second Pragara. Deepamala is third Pragara. And Pradakshanavari or Sivelipara is the fourth and compound wall is the fifth one. Here what happens, you can see the leaves. This leaves in the tip of the leaf is considered the outer pragara, fifth pragara, as earth, prithvi. Then the middle portion of the lotus leaf is the water, and then agni is in the bottom of that and up to that second and third Vakash and Vayu will come. And now this will be considered as the outer Pragara, Gobura, etc. That is you can see there is Agrasana and also you can see there is Chetravala and sometimes the Nati Mandava also. These are considered as Annamaya Kosha. Therefore, that Annamaya Kosha will be having the fifth Pragara, the entrances, then preparation of food, distribution of to worshippers, Nati Mandava, where takes place the Deva Nadanam by the concerned Chetro Vasakas. 
those who are to re have that uh, level and then they will perform the nadanam at the natya mandapam that is we will say kutambaram therefore first that is fifth prakara is of that annamaya kosha and the earth tattva bhumi tattva and then comes the shivali pura what is the importance of the shivali pura it is called pranamaya kosha and therefore here the deva is getting always we are getting the darshan at the place and the deva comes and uh, circumambulate through the shivali pura and blessings will be given or shower the blessings to all the worshipers that is the second and also the worshipers can see forever the valiya velikal in this area that the valiya velikal means the as important as the deva or it is a it is deva itself that is dharma is the deva and then you can see the dwajastamba also this is dwajastamba is the vahana the dharma is in chariot he is taking always all places therefore that importance of the vahana is also there these are the pranamaya kosha because this is water water is the good messenger of prana to all places that is why it is pranamaya kosha without the liquid thing the prana cannot reach all the body through water only that is the important thing in the pranamaya kosha then comes the third prakara as deepamala that is agni and called the manomaya kosha that means here is the mind or agni initiate all and controls properly so is the representation of deepas and the lights and always agni is elsewhere in the first sukta purohit that is he is the encouraging element and therefore it is important of this deepamala as the third prakara and now we come to the second prakara what is you are seeing that in the front an agra sapa a long hall you can see the with the three devas including the th three devas not only that you will see the mandabams in front of the all the deities and the other three sides actually it is mandabams joined together and you will see the chuttambalam it is called and this chuttambalam what happens all the chuttambalams will be having always the chanting of vedas mainly chanting of rigveda and then not only chanting of the rigveda in this area you will see ganapati homa or yajnas or whatever may be the according to that uh, yajurveda or applying the knowledge of rigveda all the pujaris or the ajaryas will be performing the yajnas and after the yajnas what happens actually saying they will attain a level of paramatma that is by singing of the vedic mantras therefore here first using the rigveda then yajurveda then samaveda and after that you will see there the kalashams or navagam panchagavyam etc are 
preparing for the shuddhi sapta shuddhi or whatever may be the for the deva and not only that there you will see the bijanguram bijanguram that is called seeds and like that the 12 grains will be germinating that is important for this temple and therefore not only that the naivedya also preparing in this area itself therefore what happens in this second pragara of tuttambala agrasabha etc is to some extent the knowledge area the four vedas are using properly in the because the abhishega etc are using for purification and then naivedya is for preservation the for the theme of atharveda is the purification by which come to preservation that is important thing therefore actually this knowledge area all the knowledge are using in the second pragara now is the question of where from you will get the knowledge that is here this shala or kandalur shala where to be formed usually in the shastra says the temple complex after the fifth pragara after the compound wall there must be sixth and seventh pragara must be there for that therefore first after the compound wall in the sixth pragara first the proper vidhi must be formed around the temple complex then the sixth pragara will be the president and so acharya not only acharya but also or chhatra vasakas that is pujaris or we can say warrior marat or the cleaning people etc etc and not only that who may be the controlling or managerial or administrative they also must be reside in this area itself and also the materials storage must be there so that all such residences will be formed in the sixth pragara after that comes the seventh pragara therefore usually shastra says the in seventh pragara is the knowledge area that is where we have the schools of vedas or all knowledge giving either vedas or vedangas or agamas or itihasa purana or whatever may be you are getting the knowledge from the universe all must be provided in the seventh pragara and after that seventh pragara you can see this janapada that is all the living area of that grama then after that there must be fields to produce whatever necessary grains or whatever the needs of the temple or the grama that must be formed that is usual system of one grama to be formed therefore here one thing is to note that is if kandalur shala or any shala or knowledge area is there and that is related to the second pragara of the knowledge applying area in the temple therefore these two are two ends of one axis of the wheel of universe therefore that is they are interconnected in between the knowledge teaching area as well as this is applying area both will form the temple complex as so chaitanya having and not only that that chaitanya must be showered to all parts of the grama and here there is an important thing also how much is the area of the kandalur shala then i think it is eastern side up to the river that will be a border 
and don't know how much is the eastern border of the river is there, then up to same distance must be cut to other three sites also. Therefore, totally you will get the area of Kandalgur Shala. And then what happens? If you compare with the Patmanavasami temple, this Patmanavasami temple also will be having in the same approach. So that from the Patmanavasami temple, how much is the river extended or distance to the eastern side? Eastern side, how much is the distance from the Patmanavasami temple? So much distance must be the from Patmanavasami temple to the south, west, and north also. So that approximately concluding this one, the Kandalguru Shalva will be northeast quadrant of that Patmanavasami temple total grama. So the olden days, the formation of grama or the Chaitanya area of the grama will be in such a manner they have to bring forth. That is usual formation of grama or patana or whatever may be <coughs> the land for all the Janapada. That is the important thing in this one. And now, Again, we will cut to the second pradara of Agrasapha, etc. We will see the what they will occur there. First, the Ajayas or Pujaris will start the karma, either Thomas or chanting or Pujas or whatever may be. That means they are using the Karma Indriya. First, they are using the Karma Indriya. By this Karma Indriya, they will reach the Jnana Indriya. And then they will be, make use of the Delaganda Pushpaduva Deva, the Tanmatras representations or the representation of Panjabudas. Therefore, then the Panjabuda. Therefore, here we have to use Panjabuda, Tanmatra, and the Yanendriya and Karmaendriya, so that 20 energical parts. And then where from these energical parts usually or Shastra says that mind, angara, and intellect, these three things which will be from Chitananda, Prachit, or Prana. So here actually, this is due to four ingredients of the universe. Therefore, actually, 24 in number. This 24 is as the extract of Stola Chedira. You can see in the first Prakara, Anandamaya Gosha. That is around the Prasada, which is the Sukhma Chedira. Therefore, here what happens? That is depicted in around the prasada. We can see that Attadik Palas and then Ananda and Brahma. So that 10 directions, there's a dik. And then you will see around it the same very delicate as one Shasta, then Durga. Then Subramanya, then Kubera, and the normal Hari as the representative of Deva. So that 5, 10 plus 5, 15. Then the south side you see the Saptamadra and Virabhadra and Ganavadi. So is 9. Totally you will get, you will reach 24. Therefore, the Sutrama Sarira, the Prasada is protected by the 24 abstract of this Thule Shirira. That is first lotus. And if you come to the next lotus, the prasada. What about the prasada? You will see 
the first you will see the outer wall and then edanadi or passage then garbhagriha wall then garbhagriha and then pidha pidha that is the five layers for protecting the karna sharira bimba and here these five are panchabhuta as, con as considered that is you can see here the uh, prasada that is outer wall then passage then garbhagriha wall and then inside garbhagriha and the pidha these five ingredients as panchabhutas and considering the earth water and the agni these three is having 10 kalas each 10 kala that is energetic parts and therefore 30 kalas then why you having five kalas as prana bana vyana udana samana and then akash has got 16 kalas but nada kalas nada kalas but it is considered only one kala as the om the sound and therefore he has 36 kalas are protecting or here inherited energy of the sukshma sharira is 36 kalas that is usual system of the temple or, or prasada and not only that here you can see the as from the upwards you will see the basement then the wall then the roof or prasara then the first floor or second wall and then the roof therefore five ingredients also here and then you will see the kalas kalas denotes the moon and sun and lastly the lotus bud as paramatma therefore towards up also as you are reaching to swarloka and uh, that is the paramatma and not only that if you consider the downwards there is shadadhara is called shadadhara then earth similarly the paramatma go for to the top and bottom we will get the same thing this is totally this is the second lotus includes all these things and not only that if you see in the second floor a first floor that is second wall there you will see sometimes in a in any temple you will see in the eastern side is the brahma pratima and southern side is dakshina murti and western side is narasimha murti and northern side is sri krishna this denotes actually the dharma artha kama moksha so that when the worshipers circumambulate the temple as well as all devas they will be getting the feeling of happiness and chidananda also and now we will come to the we will come to the uh, period uh, bimba that is idol or pratima as inside the pidha this is considered as the karana sharira and what is the karana sharira includes seven avaranams that is spherical covering as before that is considered as first is bhumandala gola then jala mandala gola then agni mandala gola then vayu mandala gola then akasha mandala gola that is five avaranams and then chandra mandalam and surya mandalam therefore we will get seven avaranams or seven coverings in the spherical type and inside is the paramatma where is the puja to be done 
that Paramatma inside the Bimbam to be worshipped properly. And this is the three lotuses inside and inside, that is the usual custom. And now what happened? Here I can see something to the Puja Tattvam also here. That Puja Tattvam is coming in the temple, the process of Acharyas, as we can consider as seven steps. For which we can consider first uh, the Abhishega, etc. And not only the all steps of puja will be done by Delaganda Pushpa Doba Deva, that is Panjabuddha's representations. Therefore, actually, what happens in the puja? Five steps are over, or five ingredients are over, and therefore we can say five steps are over. And then, then there will come the Naivedya. That Naivedya is the sixth step. And after that, what happens? They will close for the Alangara Puja and do the Alangara Puja as seventh step. Seventh step. That is what is to be done there. Alangara has done. And uh, together with Alangara, the Pushpanyali, etc., is done. And when we see opening the door of the Garbhagraha, we are all seeing the Devarathana. Devarathana. That is, Devarathana, we can, or the worshippers can see the Devarathana, and at the same time, the showering the Tirtha, etc., so that all worshippers will reach to some extent the Paramatma and happiness and Chitananda. That is the steps of Puja, is also a thing from the. Therefore, what happens? The three lotus flower system confirm Chaitanya is stable only if all three established or powered by karma or dharma. So the temple complex will shower blessings to all parts of grama also. So chala knowledge must be considered as the encouraging element or the initiator vanni as Paramatma. This is the usual status of the temple complex. Now is the question, another question arises. Even though we are using the knowledges, what knowledge to have that is the universal knowledge? That is also in Veda is indicating and using in temples also. And they're during the Kalasam and Abhishega or installation purpose, etc. For that, I can come to the Sukra, which is in second mandala, second adhyaya, 25th varga, and sixth Sukra. It is Chadurbhi Sagam Navadi. Chadurbhi Sagam Navadi. That is 94 ingredients or 94 energetical parts are there. Saying the, in the Suttam. And what are the 94? That is also divided into two. Because one is lifespan or time span and the other is energetical part. So that we, now we can go to the, what is the time span? Time span. That is actually, if you consider the time span, one year is the important thing. And then two ayana. Two ayana means 
two ends of one axis and then rudukal five even though there are six rudus but the shastra indicates hemantam and chisira must be jointly considered so it is only five rudus the suktam says like that and then months months are chaitradi month or meshadi month whatever may be and that is because the chaitra month and mesha is interconnected because mesha sangrama must exist in chaitra month so for the distinction indicated like twice the or 12 months then paksha paksha pakshangal that is the moon positions black and white similarly two ends that is you will get totally 24 pakshas and then days 30 day time and night time and yamangal and rashigal that is one day you will get 8 yama or 12 rashis so that you will get kalavayavangal the day span is 94 and here even though it is here what happens it is called continuation of the year as called prabhavadi varsha prabhavadi years that is 60 in number therefore 60 into 2 120 year and i in which sandhi is 20 year this is the life span of all human beings 120 year is the actual but because of the sandhi it is considered only 100 years that is the time span as far as concerned the universal law or universal knowledge and here is also there another thing as far as the body is concerned body is concerned we have the mooladhara etc inside the body first i have shown the outside of the body 51 alphabets are arranged similarly as a kala chakra inside the mooladhara chakra it is all the letters all the alphabets are arranged in continuously as rings or something like that from mooladhara to manivurga etc etc therefore here is the one knowledge about the universe and when comes the next the knowledge as the kala avayava that is energetical part it is called kala not kala kala that is actually it is here is not noted outside is vanni mandalam and then surya mandalam and then soma mandalam this is the three sets of swarloga to some extent and the paramatma makes the vanni mandalam that is agni and agni that vanni mandalam has got 10 kalas which is called dharma kala and it is denoted by the alphabet ya ra la va sa cha sa ga la cha that is outer ring outer golam is represented by those 10 alphabets then comes the surya mandalam surya mandalam has got we know the aditya 12 adityas we know there were 12 kalas are there but here what happens because of i don't know anyhow maybe night and that time or two will be happening therefore it is considered as two alphabets for each kala therefore here not in the continuously but it is one in the clockwise and the other in reverse order therefore ka bha gha bha like that we will reach finally tha da that is the usual therefore 24 letters are used ka to not excluding ma but usually in some puja procedures ma is used in the middle also 
Doctor, actually, to some extent, they are using 51, uh, uh, 25 itself. That is the by two golems. And then the third one is the Soma Mandala, which is Nada Brahma as Soma Mandala has got 16 colors, which is represented by A, R, E, E, etc. Um, uh, that is 16. These three forms are Om, um, and the final Om, the word, the Chaitanya. That is usual custom. And then starts from again the Panchabuddha Golams. That is Bhumi Gola, Bhumandala Gola, then Jalamandalam, then Agni Mandalam, then Vayu Mandalam, and Akasha Mandalam. This continuously, what happens? This here also, the Akash, sorry, uh, earth, water, and Agni contains 10 colors each. Then why you contain only five colors as Pranabana, Vyanodana? So for totally we will get uh, 35 colors, which is arranged or which is considered as the 35 alphabets as Kaka, Ganga, to Yara, Lava, Sahalata. And that is it, accepting this 16 alphabets. And then Akasha Nada Brahma is considered as, or now that is Akasha Gola contain 16 alphabets, that is A, A, E, E, etc. So that we will get totally 51 alphabets. So what happens here, we will get first 51 alphabets, but only 38 colors. Here 51 alphabets, 51 colors. Therefore, totally 51 plus 38, 89 colors. Then what happens? Continuing that, we will get Shakti Kala. That is three Shakti Kalas inside that one. Shakti Kala is Icha Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Jnana Shakti. That is three Shakti Kalas in, inside that one. And then again, Inside that is Tit Ananda, that is Shanda Kala. All Shanda Chandi is the, that is Tit Ananda. And after that, what happens? The Tit and Ananda joins and combines and makes the small Anda. Small Anda, that is the birth of small under, which is anoraniyan. It is so small. And then what happens? That is enlarged. And enlarged and enlarged, it makes a sushira whole. And then it is split into two. One part goes up and the other part goes down. So that the upper part is the Sarloga, down part is the Bhuloga, and the middle part is the Andarecha Loga or Bhuvar Loga. And Shastra says or indicates in Andariksha contains the Ishwara, the representative Paramatma. So all in Bhuloga, living in Bhurloga, in Bhurloga, in Bhurloga, must worship this Paramatma forever. Then only the Chaitanya of Triloga system will be preserved. Uh, and here itself, there is another thing in the lifespan, we will, be, we will be having here 
not hearing in the light band. We will call panchang as one ear. What is the panchang also? Here we have to note the knowledge. That is due to the sun produces the seven days. Sunday, Monday, etc. as seven grahas. That is the thing. And then the seven grahas from sun, but from moon, you will get the 27 stars. Then moon and sun will produce the tithi, 30 tithis. And moon and sun, moon and sun will produce also in the reverse order 27 nitya yoga. And then from the tithi, you will get 11 karana. Therefore, totally, you will get panchang as base, nakshatra, tidhi, nitya yoga, and karana. This is the controlling factors of total universe. And this is also, if you add, you will get one or two. Therefore, we don't know. Anyhow, we have used the, the alphabets 51 plus 51, totally one or two parts or one or two energetic parts. Therefore, if this total energy we have to produce and or the knowledge city, we have to use how this one to adopted in the knowledge city or knowledge area. And now the Triloga system takes place the importance. There is, we are all aware of Idhiyasa Purana, etc., the Ramayana, Bharata, and Bhagavata. In shortly, I can say, Sri Rama and brothers was born, born to due to consuming of payasam, extract of the Uttrakameshti Yagam during the battle with Ravana. Agastimuni reminded Sri Rama that he is the self same Aditya Chaitanya by imparting the Aditya Studi containing many names of Aditya. This conveys that Sri Rama is the Chaitanyam, which is the universe. On realization of this knowledge, he overcome Ravana and re-established the Chaitanyam in Sorlaka. Therefore, to some extent, Ramayana is the knowledge of the Sorlaka. And then, Next is Bhishma Pitamaha was born due to the consumption of Dhu Sorlaga Chaitanyam with Andarisha or in Andarisha water because water is also to some extent is a Vidrutvam. And here is one important thing is that for Vishma Pidamaka, the prana must be preserved only. He has, he must have some cooperation with others. That is actually Panjabudas, you can say Pandavas. And uh, the heart and the lens as Dhritarashtra and Gandhari. And also to operate this 101 Nadis Kauravas, but that they are kept alive by Vayu only if they are cooperation. But what happens, Vishnu, as the help of Panjabuda was not unavailable, and due to the non cooperation of the heart lens 101 Nadis, Vayu had no option but to distill and lay down in the Uvarlava 
and gandhari tried to open the nadi in order to give access to the vayu but could not force open this is told as the incident of duryodhana wearing a banana leaf where when meeting gandhari before the battle hence vayu could not rescue the nadis and then kaurava were defeated and killed after that with the rest of his power bhishma explained through thousand names the eight murtis sri krishna paramatma to pandavas and attained mukdi finally the surya vamsham and chandra vamsham jointly produced six gunas elder brothers of balrama and krishna then ananda came as balrama bhumi because the next avatar krishna paramatma required a platform to operate this is the triloka system the temple concept also is the system developed for the aradhana of paramatma to invoke and retain the paramatma energy jivatma continuing the human beings in bhulaga started worshiping and praying to paramatma and now this is the three approaches to ramayana bharata and bhagavata that may be the reason in nowadays every year ramayana will be taught similarly in many places bhagavata is taught anyhow we have to continue to get the chaitanya to earth also and here is one thing i have to note here kandalur temple if we consider the devas one is mahavishnu with the sarlaga qualities two may be maheshwara with the bhuvarlaga qualities which is only four of them up to water uh, including water except the gandha of earth therefore the shivalinga is not full in size also so the artha part or arthanarishara is the actually middle one we can consider as arthanarishara or the maheshara then artha part joins with the earthly quality prithvi becomes the brahma brahma and which is the brahma and saraswati which is the complete qualities containing the temple complex therefore with all qualities parameshwara and parvati as the third became into existence therefore mainly mahavishnu and maha deva temple in kandamru sala so we have to pray this kandalur sala devas or mahavishnu and maheshwara or mahadeva nothing other than tat chatur deva idam sukram utcharal asyam sarvasadam devam sarvasmi this is our, our prarthana or prayer to the devas and to this kandamru sala also and also to conclude this one thing i have to express these presentations are not due to me i am only messenger conveying the ideas initiated or encouraged by four fathers gurus and you all the people who have requested to the same through our see thanks to all namaskara thank you thank you sir for a wonderful and very interesting lecture and now let me invite our chair professor mulli madhavan to lead the uh, section with this uh, time for discussions uh, for interaction and all so let me invite uh, professor mulli madhavan sir
this uh, very 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 interesting topic being discussed and the very authentic informations are given as far as uh, a temple construction how temple is connected with the, the knowledge city uh, how the temple itself can be considered as a knowledge city and uh, such very important because uh, when you view this from the point of view of kandalu shala uh, i think uh, perhaps among our universities as 12 universities in the country kandalu shala is the only the single uh, university where the temple and the the the, the knowledge systems are so associated very closely so keeping this in mind krishnanambudri has nambudri pad has mentioned or rather given a, a a great picture in a great canvas how these prakarams works but i have uh, Uh, because i am not giving much details about it because you all heard about it and it was a very simple language he presented most things are uh, very um as you said it is symbolically presented how shastras they uh, represent the philosophy or the themes through uh, some sort of uh, what we call simplification and uh, i have one doubt to be asked i think perhaps uh, he has mentioned about uh, two prakarams the second prakara and the seventh prakara i think when you consider to kandru shala i want to connect this matter with kandru shala uh Krishna Nambudri Pad was uh, mentioning uh, that uh, the knowledge, the the knowledge, imparting of knowledge, and exercising the knowledge, or so to say, do practically what we learned. These two things are being are uh, uh, represented by the second and the seventh pragaras of the temple. So. i want a little clarification how these two pragaras are being connected so uh, with this humble uh, what we call uh, this uh, clarification uh, we, i need a clarification only that's why uh, we will start the discussion and if any other questions are there we, we ask and can be uh, and uh, uh, speaker can uh, give all the uh, suggestions or uh, omissions or commissions or even uh, doubts or even questions can be answered at the end so this uh, my doubt is based on the prakarams which uh, mainly uh, first uh, prakara second prakara third prakara he has mentioned in order and uh, the second and the seventh pragaras these two pragaras are connected with the knowledge system one is giving the knowledge the other one is implementing the knowledge or practicing the knowledge see how these are interconnected and how they are related so uh, i want as uh, clarification in that matter Yes. Yes. Can you hear? Yeah. Yes, sir. We yes. can hear. It. That is because first of all, we must have the knowledge. Where from the knowledge comes? Actually, if you consider all these three entire system. that is triloka system there were always you are getting the knowledge only from 
swarloga and then coming to that uh, as i have said last presentation that is darpana drishya matra nagari tulya that is to the reverse order oh, yeah. to the that is the main theme of that uh, all the knowledges whatever the knowledge in the universe is the same as the knowledge in the as the temple or the earth or the body considering as the same knowledge exists or produces that is why here also an important thing is produces the words and we are praying for saraswati for vani that is important thing therefore that is that come must inside the body total universe is a body and in which starts the all the knowledges and therefore here also we must start from both ways therefore here if you start from the temple you can reach the sala the seventh pragara or from the seventh pragara you can reach here the most probably the seventh pragara holds approximately in the middle part of the universe that is andariksha or swarloga even though all knowledge are there somewhere or producing inside also but the interconnecting area is important because as vishnu bhagavan as or lakshmi cannot do anything similarly maheshwara cannot cannot do anything but only prithvi has got the genetical power give birth to anyone and that after that birth birth is in the attached to the gravitation force in the earth prithvi loga but it is lives and its vihara ranga its moves and does karma only in bhuvar loga that is why to some extent the sala the knowledge area must be the bhuvar loga that bhuvar loga must get all the knowledge from the swar loga and that must be transferred as an as an interconnecting media and to the earth itself that may be the reason for these two are so interconnected and being the two ends of one axis of universal wheel okay thank you i want some uh, more explanation about the characteristics of this uh, fourth and fifth pragara uh, fourth pragara the fourth and fifth pragara some characteristics uh, yes fifth pragara is considering the bull bhumandala or concerned the earth therefore actually, actually it is called annamaya kosha that annamaya kosha is a strengthening part of the body therefore even though all the energy are inside but without the annamaya kosha that is outer shell we can't move anything but it must receive also even the taking the food or taking the air pranavayu whatever may be taking it through the tips of the hairs also all is so much even though we are seeing the the navadwara but so many dwaras is there therefore what happens that is an important part of the first that is why in temples there is the important four gobiras on four sides denoting that one and also distribution of food and not only that chatrabala is there also controlling all the area and performance of the natyamandava etc 
that is the importance therefore we express our all through this annamaya kosha that is the reason and second is that no doubt the deva is there or always even though in the shivali etc only coming there but also there is the presence presence of shivali uh, variabilical and gaja and therefore that is also an important thing in the fourth pradara that is the importance of fourth and fifth pradaras Uh, it's an exact difference uh, between fourth and uh, fifth pragara. Fourth pragara is the water. That is then uh, water, because water only the material can take anything everywhere in the body. That is, yeah. if the water is, along is. with the earth, there is no genetic the, or the birth will not occur. that is why the shankaracharya itself in the second stotra says bijangurum any bijam to be sprout or germinating if the water is there otherwise it cannot have help therefore that power is coming through the deva around the shivali para that is he is coming the shivali only but also even though it is not shivali is performed then also present presented or presence is expressed by the maha pilikal and dajastamba yes the fifth pragara fifth eh fifth fifth anjamda eh are fifth pragara annamaya kosham Oh, that is Kosha. that is already explained annamaya kosha okay. yes yes okay okay thank you yeah. so uh, sir uh, number uh, part can we conceive the entire idea uh, as far as the vastu vidya is concerned each vastu has have a vastu purusha yeah yeah yeah, yeah. even even if you take a small jar yeah that jar has a vastu purusha is it not of course of if course. you take it uh, yeah, yeah, uh, so all these ingredients you can see there all these elements you can see there i think so yeah of course that is called the vastu purusha mandala we can consider the yeah. vastu purusha mandala as the earth completely one vastu purusha yes then you can yeah. consider the temple complex as a one vastu purusha mandala or india as an another vastu purusha mandala or the grama is vastu yes. purusha mandala that principle is the yeah and that is not separate one even though we are saying these three lotus flowers it is one it is not separate one yeah that it is, is not separate yeah and not only that as far as vastuvitya is concerned all the shapes are determined by the shape is determined by the on the only the measurements the formation of and the do you do complex is also with the measurements do do you think that the sankhya philosophy of uh, the 24 numbers of prakriti uh, oh, that yes. uh, buddhi ahankara tanmatra uh, uh, the panja I think, bhuta yeah. i that think is, you are explaining the same thing uh, i think perhaps that is uh, actually if i explain the gayatri mantra then is more uh, Uh, knowledgeable for from the Gayatri Mantra. Oh, that is. That is in one sutra. Uh, one sutra it is saying Rasa Sridharam, Rasa Dharana, and Rasa Virchardena. Ah. Uh, that is the thing. That is first we is that Tal Savidur Varyaniya. That is uh, we have to verify that is receive it. What is what to be received? The four. main source of energy that is mano buddhi ahankara chitta uh. and after that we tal savidur bargo varene bargo devasya dhimahi that is you must understand dhairikya that is dharana okay Then dhimahi you have to visarjike that dharana is made by dharana is made by the knowledge 
the panjabhuda and the tanmatra and after okay. that karmendriya that is visarjikan that is expressing mm -hmm. all these things that means the karmendriya jnanendriya and tanmendriya using that you will done that in the gayatri on burbhuvaswa that is three logas explaining that and you will reach the uh, attaining you are the all that is lastly the paramatma therefore actually rishi chandas devata that is chandas means only the combining part of this 24 ingredients ah chandas ah achadayedi achadayedi it protects it protects achadayedi that is chanda it protects the sukshma sharira properly yeah 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 that is avida devata that is it actually it, 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 it is a wonder it, it is a wonderful idea it is a wonderful yeah. idea that is that is why uh, we are, not only that in the gayatri can... procedure the gayatri mantra the procedure not only the chanting of uh, gayatri mantra but also from the morning it will start and you will get to the step by steps and after the gayatri mantra you will turn and turn and seven times uh, you will attain the seven murtis and after that satyanarayan yeah. murti devi gayatri chanda paramatma devana so that you are devana. meeting the yes. paramatma yeah okay that is very clear very nice yeah, yeah. so the this the idea of chandas is very wonderful <laughs> how how it protects and how it put everything in one shelter and keep uh, what we call tight right. uh, that is why we, that is why we must be self sufficient uh, it, it basically it, uh, basically all, it happens uh, because in in a mantra there are several words several letters and yeah. uh, without dropping anything you are putting everything in tight and uh, keeping under one shell so uh, the, the word chandas is in, uh, giving different uh, uh, what we call ang meaning in different angles yeah yeah no doubt chandas means only that it, that it said we is here yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 120 or that is uh, exactly from that because actually we have got uh, seven rishis and seven chandas yeah yeah continue seven chandas uh, there is 21 21 chandas ah uh, there there and there is there is chandas. a 21 yeah. chandas process was 84 plus 20 you will get 104 mm and not only that there is another aspect that is 24 chandas is are the because you have to yeah. add bhu bhuva swa that is also three chandas yeah and if you add om also you will get 25 and you will get 25 into 4 120 that is the life span of the human beings okay very good uh, is there any uh, questions or any doubts or any clarification anything is there then you can ask now this is time or uh, then otherwise we will move for the, our concluding speech so i think we can move forward yes then uh, you, you you may invite yeah it is really a wonderful uh, presentation and you know a lot of knowledge imparting a lot of knowledge and uh, scholarly interactions uh, that is uh, that is a unique uh, uh, uniqueness of and this and uh, dr jodi we got one more thing that kandalu uh, shala when we construct the buildings and other things it should be the seventh portion of the prakara of the temple Uh, that is that's a new what, idea what we got yeah what are you <laughs> about you say. what you Keep study it. in the seventh prakara you will implement it in the second prakara that is it exactly exactly we will be inviting him for uh, for the you know construction of our kandalu shala 
he will be our advisor and all. Uh, yeah, so then, uh, yeah, let me now invite our uh, uh, beloved uh, director, uh, Sri Narayanan Puti, the president of uh, Andalus Saha, for the concluding remarks and and uh, propose out of thanks and thereafter the chanting the Sandipada. Thank you. It was a wonderful exposition and a wonderful presentation, particularly linking with uh, the Vastu Shastra, with the knowledge of Veda and uh, other Shastras, how the intricately these concepts are interlinked, are being explained wonderfully and uh, uh, we are all are uh, enlightened and have a different vision about the Vastu Shastra and uh, the temple. Usually we go and worship, but we would have never thought of such a intricate philosophies are interlinked in such a complex way. So it will be an, an eye opener to those who search our uh, in our rituals and temples, the secrets of the philosophies of our rishis. So it was uh, a wonderful experience. And uh, as an introduction, and uh, for summing up, this, it is an uphill task. I don't know uh, how much I will be able to uh, be successful because with complex ideas and many, many points are here exposed and narrated logically. So it is an exercise and a challenge for everyone's intelligence and the concept we have already acquired. Ramesh Rikanipa Yukushan Nambudi is a drawing and a Kulabari in traditional science, in this traditional science and having international uh, reputation. He is acclaimed as an international award in this subject. We are uh, fortunate to have such an international authority in our uh, in, in this lecture of Kandulu Sala, which will be uploaded in the internet and uh, very useful for the academic community and research scholars who are being uh, more and more searching to study the wonders of the science and uh, here by hearing this lecture, we are, uh, it gives this uh, wonderful exposition and narration and uh, uh, is uh, explaining why he is considered as a Kulabadi in Vastu Shastra. <laughs>